So I'm Dr. Donald Beans. Um, I have an undergraduate degree as a nurse many years ago. I've been a licensed acupuncturist in Montana for 30 years. I had a practice originally in Missoula and now I'm working in, out of my home in Big Fork and at the Bridge Medical Center in Whitefish Cooperative Clinic up there. Um, I'm also a certified homeopath. I went to the year-long postgraduate class uh, for the Foundation for Homeopathy in uh, Seattle, Washington. And that was in the early 90s. And now here I am speaking to you. And what I want to talk about today is the same, the same title for my talk as for my DVD, and that is what to do about the flu. What I'm hearing is really a lot of doom and gloom and you know even in the ordinary news media they're you know trying to amp things up and talking about vaccinations and how the flu is going to wipe out all these people well if we look into the past and see what was done in past epidemics there's a lot of hope for all of us with very simple remedies so I'm going to briefly go through uh, what to do about the flu and I'm going to add some things that maybe you haven't heard before um, about why you might want to use some of these very simple remedies. So let's start with what do you do now? Well, there's nothing really going on here at least. So all you need to do at this point is to be able to increase your immune system's ability to fight infections. And that doesn't mean super immunity, that just means the ordinary uh, things that your body can do to fight infections. So the way to start with that is to think about using probiotics. And these are things like acidophilus, you know, the, the good bacteria that grow in your intestines. Now the reason that they're there, the reason you have those, um, the lactobacillus acidophilus and the, other, and the other organisms that are in your intestines, the reason you have those is to create lactic acid. And the reason to have lactic acid in your gut is it kills off the other bugs. Right, so if you have enough lactobacillus in your gut, it'll be producing enough lactic acid to keep the intestine acid. And in that way, then you can't grow candida. And so that helps you to be, uh, gives, you, gives you a better ability to fight off any other microorganism that you might come in contact with. So everybody, all the time, probiotics. There's a million brands on the market. I don't necessarily recommend any particular one, but it needs to be a live culture. And I've been asked if yogurt is enough uh, to give you enough, enough acidophilus. If you are in pretty good shape intestinally, yogurt's probably fine. If you're not, if you've taken an antibiotic in the last year or two, I would, I would supplement in pill form. The next thing is fish liver oil. Grandma or great grandma, maybe, uh, the great grandma remedy of cod liver oil every day. This is given for a very specific reason. Essential fatty acids, which is what's in cod liver oil, move calcium from the bloodstream into the tissue. Where the flu gets you, where a lot of people die, is from the lungs, right? They start to bleed from the lungs. And the reason is that those tissues are unprotected by calcium. Doesn't matter how much calcium you take. You have to be able to move it from the blood to the tissue. And that's what essential fatty acids do. Another thing that I've heard recently is that you should make sure that your vitamin D level is adequate. I would agree with that, but I wouldn't agree with taking vitamin D just because it's good for you. And here's the reason. Vitamin D moves calcium into the bloodstream, right? So when you take calcium, you take vitamin D. And that takes that calcium and moves it into the bloodstream. But then what? It has to get into the tissue. If you have too much vitamin D, it pulls 
the calcium out of the tissue back into the bloodstream. Example, why do you sunburn? I mean, what's the physiology of sunburn? I'm standing out here in this gorgeous Montana day and uh, getting even more red to my complexion, which is fine with me. But what's happening is the cholesterol in my skin is being changed by the sun. That cholesterol is being changed into vitamin D. So what's happening? That vitamin D is taking the calcium out of my tissue and pulling it back into my bloodstream, and then I sunburn. But if I take essential fatty acids like fish liver oil, that puts the, the uh, calcium back into the tissue, and you do not burn. And your lungs are protected. All your tissues are protected. So that's the second thing. Third thing, another grandma's home remedy to acidify the blood a little bit. Glass of water, tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, teaspoon of honey. I mean, it just it sounds like nothing. It sounds like, why would you even do that? It's not medicine. It acidifies the blood just a tiny bit. And by doing that, you don't have anywhere for those bugs to grow. If you can keep that blood a little bit acidic with apple cider vinegar, which is so simple, then you can't, not you can't get an infection, but you are much more protected from any kind of infection if you can keep your gut acidified with probiotics and your blood acidified with apple cider vinegar. And if you take the fish liver oil, you're getting the vitamin D, but you're getting it in a food level dose, not in a pharmaceutical dose, which if you go to the store and buy vitamin D3, for instance, it's colocalciferol, right? Synthetic vitamin D. Well, I don't want that. I'd like to have some natural vitamin D as it occurs in foods, like fish liver oil. So the next thing to think about is what to do if the flu comes to town. You know, people start getting it, things start happening. There's a couple of remedies, and let me say, this two-page sheet is floating around here someplace, and actually Sun Life Health Foods has put a price list for all the things that are on this list. They put a price list together. Those are floating around here because I'm going to start saying words that you need a, a spell check for, and I'm not going to spell them all out. So there's two flu preventive remedies. One is influenzinum, right, a remedy made directly from the flu. That's been used for more than 100 years and very protective against the flu. And the second one is oscillococcinum. I see Stephen walking around over here with a bunch of those. Uh, so you can get one from him and then you can understand what I'm actually saying. That'll be good. So when you're taking influenzinum or oscillococcinum, it's in a 200C potency. And you take it for three to six days if the flu is around. And it's protective at a certain level. You know, it's like, it's like, uh, any kind of immunizing against anything doesn't work on everyone. It's like treating any kind of illness with any kind of medicine doesn't work on everyone. Thank you kindly. So then, what do you do if the flu actually shows up, like you actually get it? Um, there are some, a few main remedies. I'll just list the remedies, then I'll tell you what they're for. Gelsenium is one. Some more. It's made from the yellow jasmine plant. Uh, bryonia is another one made from hops, and Eupatorium perfoliatum. Um, and these are all in 200C, all taken several times a day. But you have to differentiate <clears throat> which remedy works for the kind of flu you have, because homeopathy is absolutely individualized, which means you have to look at the person's specific symptoms. So let's go back to the first remedy, gelsemium. That was the main remedy used in 1918. 